and welcome to Zodiac Tarot Readings for August 2016. These readings will bring me up to um, a year that, uh, that I started these. The first readings I put out were September 2015. I'm still considering whether to continue with these monthly readings, uh, maybe continue with the monthly readings at the beginning of the month and drop the mid-month updates. Um, I'll see. I haven't decided yet. Also, so important, um, I have successfully moved my website, The Witch's Corner, from its old uh, web host to our new location. And the new URL for The Witch's Corner is amethystrain.blogspot.com. This is not a blog. This is a website. So technically, the only post on this blog is the home page. Um, and then I have added all the other pages that I've moved over from the original site. And those pages can be found in the menu in the right column. So amethystrain.blogspot.com. The Witch's Corner lives on. For this month's readings, I'm going to choose different tarot decks for different signs, and I actually haven't decided um, which I'm going to use for which. Um, it's something that I will decide um, as I get ready to do the readings. So before each reading, I will introduce to you which, which deck I'm using for that particular sign. As usual, um, in the links in the description box below each video are links to free calculators to help you find your moon and your rising sign. Most people, especially those not totally familiar with astrology, just fixate on our sun sign. But sometimes your moon and your rising sign will actually resonate with you more. Um, and you should watch those videos as well. And sometimes it's just fun to do so because it rounds out the reading somewhat. And some of you may not have like a separate sign for each of those um, three aspects because my moon and my rising sign are both the same. So it will be interesting for you to use those links and to find your moon and your rising sign if you don't already know them. My main plug for this August is my book, The Spiritual Feminist. I would like to say that um, uh, from the title of this book, this is a book on matriarchal spirituality, and that is my version of feminism. And um, this book leads women to healing, self-discovery, and a spirituality that is uh, based in the goddess. And that's what the spiritual feminist is all about, and I highly recommend this book for women everywhere. Also, at my YouTube channel, there is a playlist called Woman Speak. There are 14 videos in this playlist, and these videos are based on my book, The Spiritual Feminist. There's a different theme and a different goddess for each one of the videos, so you might want to take a look there and enjoy. And now, with no further ado, on to August Zodiac Tarot Readings. Hello Leo and welcome to your August reading. The deck that I'm going to be using for you this month is Halloween. As you can see I got a really good deal on this deck. Um, it was on sale. This is the back of the box. Um, the Halloween Tarot. So we're going to be opening this up and um, I've been using a different deck for August readings um, for each of the 12 zodiac signs. Some decks I have just been so successful at connecting with and have gotten amazing readings. And there's been a couple of decks where it, the energy was either very confusing um, or I just didn't make a connection with it at all. It was very unusual. So we're going to see what happens with this deck. Here's the back. Isn't that adorable? 
Everyone is yearning for Halloween anyway. On Facebook, people, including myself, are already posting Halloween memes. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to light us a little piece of incense here to smudge our space. And, um, and then I will shuffle these cards and I will draw four cards for you from various areas of the deck. Let's... Okay, here we go. Oh, I'm hoping for positive energy and a good connection with this deck. I'm ready to start. So we're going to go ahead with card number one. Three of imps. Oh my goodness. Three of imps. Um, I'm getting a third party situation or two's company. Three's a crowd. Also the phrase the third wheel. This is what popped into my head upon impact. So let me take a look at this card now and see what other energy are we drawing from? Uh, the idea of two against one, the idea of being outnumbered, the idea of someone very unique and individual presenting an idea um, or a, a laying out a plan, uh, trying to connect in a way with someone, someone's not getting him. Uh, it, it's as though someone very unique steps into uh, possibly between the friendship. Uh, uh, platonic friendships. There's a platonic friendship and then a third party comes and that can disrupt the mechanisms within a relationship. It can change the energies. It can, it can play with different characteristics and personalities and emotions. Interesting. Let's go on to card number two. Card number two is Seven of Ghosts. Seven of Ghosts. Oh, uh, I have the impression, first off, of someone being up in the air about something. Someone has to decide on something or they're not sure how you feel about something. Or some of you Leos um, being put in a position where you're going to be making a decision. Putting, put in a position where you have to make a decision. Uh, put in a position, oh my, where something, where a decision you make is going to affect more than just you. It's an important decision. It's going to have a life impacting effect on a possibly um, a work and um, where you go from the point you're at. Or perhaps it's a familial decision and it will affect a family. Um, spouses, partners, siblings, parents. It's whatever whatever you're connected to, whatever you're concentrating on Leo right now, it has a, a washed effect where it's going to uh, affect a lot of people, not just yourself. And I want to look at this card just a moment. Uh, also, the idea of someone who has their feet very firmly planted, um, someone who's very staunch about their idea, someone who's already very set in the, a decision that they have possibly already made, they're not going to be swayed. And what they have decided, no matter what this affects, and this is a general reading, it can be such a variety of almost anything for the Leos out there, but the staunch decision that you have made has set you apart. Um, this can be 
positive, this can be negative. In a negative aspect, it sets you apart as, it's a you against them scenario. In the positive aspect, it has set you apart as someone who is groundbreaking, someone who is not afraid to try new things, someone who is not afraid to voice an opinion that goes against the, the, the quota, or the quo pro, is that what they call it? going to go on to card number three. Card number three is nine of bats. Nine, oh, the bat, there's a, uh, bats in the belfry. Hmm. Um, there's a, a, a feeling of mental stress about this card. Uh, this card reminds me of the nine of swords in more traditional decks. It's that kind of energy that's coming through. Um, all of this um, interaction, um, all of this decision making, all of this um, being put on the spot in groups or, or having to justify yourself in your own decisions, um, having to make decisions. Some of you, for some of you Leos, I just have the feeling that it's like bats in the belfry. You're tired. You have too much going through your mind. You have, you have um, too many responsibilities, you have too many people waiting for you to make these decisions or or to uh, apply yourself in different areas. Um, there's also the idea of a watcher. There's, a, and I'm, I don't think it's like in like the spirit guide kind of watching. It feels like it feels like someone, someone who is in a position to either help you or hinder you, to either set you up where you need to be, or someone, also someone very responsible who can say, who can say, not this person, this Leo needs time to um, reflect, needs time to regroup their energy. Oh my, Leos do you you. I'm getting like a scattered energy. This is another very odd deck. So we may pull a fifth card when we get all done with here. I had one other deck that um, the connection was so scattered and so odd that I pulled a fifth card just to try to pull the energy together to um, complete the picture. Right now, Leo, it's like you want to knock people off up from your shoulders, you want them to stop picking on you. A lot of you Leos want to be out from underneath responsibility. A lot of you Leos may have shouldered too much for too long and it's time for a break. I also have the idea of the, the, the watcher as someone who's um, has your best interest at heart, someone you can confide in, someone that you can share responsibility with, someone who has some way of lightening your load. That's nice. Card number four. Uh, Wheel of Fortune. Your luck's going to change, Leo. If this summer has seemed scattered to you, and that's what I'm feeling with this energy. If this, if this summer and uh, this time of year and this coming month seems scattered to you and um, you feel set aside, you feel outside a group, you feel uh, pressured to make decisions, you feel pressured to fit in, um, you feel pressured to be something that you're not. Um, if this kind of scattered energy is what you're feeling, it's what I'm getting from the cards, which is making it very scattered in my head, actually. Um, your luck is going to change. It's something also, oh, also with this card, the idea of spinning out of control and also the idea of some of you leaving something very important, a responsibility to someone else. And that may be a, a mistake for some of you. It's as though the man on this wheel is going round and around and around and he's strapped on there and someone is throwing knives at him. Um, that's kind of the 
that's kind of the energy that I'm getting from this card is exactly what I'm seeing in the picture is that this man has no control over what is happening to him. The wheel is spinning, the knife thrower is throwing knives, and he's just kind of hanging on for the ride. And I think that's the whole problem with a lot of you Leos is you have to stop this wheel and you have to get off and take control of your life. You have to be the one at the helm of the ship. You have to be the one making decisions. Even if, if you're not sure that they're right decisions, it has to be your decisions. You have to gain control of your life. And I said, because this is such an odd deck that I have never read with before, we're going to pull one more card just to see if we can pull it all together. Either it will pull it all together for us or it will be more confusing. So we'll have to see which it's going to be. I hope that you are getting something from this reading that is coherent. And here we go. I'm almost afraid to look. Ah, Page of Ghosts. And it looks like for some of you, Leo, this is a message, message, uh, a messenger that comes with um, new information, new connections with um, new relationships. Uh, also, the idea of someone revealing their true self to you, um, someone coming to a point, um, and possibly this is actually even you, Leo, where you are finally comfortable enough to remove the sheet. You're comfortable enough to take off the mask. You have found someone that you are comfortable enough with to be yourself, to expose yourself for the way you really are, for the way your life really is. Um, that can be wonderful and liberating and can be an amazing feeling. So, with that all said, I do believe this is where I am ending this very unusual reading with this very unusual deck for Leo.